the book of Ezekiel chapter 47 I'm going to finish up uh, what I started a week a week ago before uh, we had Bishop come over uh, I think this ties into the closing of one year and it kisses in agreement with the spiritual father the overseer was talking about uh, on this past Sunday Ezekiel 47 starting at verse number one do you have it come on and say amen the Bible says in my vision the man brought me back to the entrance of the temple there I saw a stream flowing east from beneath the door of the temple and passing to the right of the altar on its south side. Verse 2, the man brought me outside the wall through the north gate and led me around to the eastern entrance. There I could see the water flowing, my God, out through the south side of the east gate. Measuring as he went, he took me along the stream for 1,750 feet and then led me across. The water was up to my ankles. He measured off another 1,750 feet and led me across again. This time, the water was up to my knees. And another, after another 1,750 feet, it was up to my waist. Then he measured, my God, another 1,750 feet, and the river was too deep to walk across. It was, so, it was deep enough to swim in, but too deep to walk through. Lord, have mercy. He asked me, have you been watching Son of man. Who, my God. God is saying, are you paying attention, church? Are you paying attention, internal, external, and all around you? Are you listening? Who, my God. Then he led me back along the riverbank. Verse 7 says, when I returned, I was surprised by the sight of many trees growing on both sides of the river. Then he said to me, this river flows east through the desert, ugh, into the valley of the Dead Sea. Boy, the water of this stream will make the salty waters of the Dead Sea fresh again. Fresh and pure. Verse 9 says, there will be swarms of living things wherever the water of this river flows. It says, fish, fish will abound in the Dead Sea. For its waters will become fresh, life will flourish wherever this water flows. Do you got rivers of living water flowing out of here? When people come in contact with you, are you giving them life? When people listen to you talk, what are they listening to? When you're going through trials and tribulation, what's coming out your mouth? We're talking about this river is affecting something that's dead. When this river connects with something that's dead, instead of the dead affecting the life, the life affects the dead. That means this river got power. This river have influence. This river could be in any environment, baby, cold, and it affects the environment instead of the environment affecting it. This river, I heard my God, affects and controls circumstances, Barry, instead of circumstances controlling it. This river, I heard my God, speaks life when my God, when everything looks dead. This river walks by faith and operates by faith. It don't operate by sight. This type of river is a life-giving river, which all of us that profess to be Christians should be. We should be giving life to everything that's around us that's dead. And there's so much around us up close and abroad that is dead. Don't you know your Facebook could be giving life or death to somebody? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Jump down to verse 12. This river says, fruit trees of all kinds will grow. It says fruit trees will grow along both sides of the river. The leaves of, the leaves of these trees will never turn brown and fall. And there will always be fruit on the branches. You can always go here and get life. There will be a new crop every month. Ooh, Lord, have mercy. Who for they, for there are, for they are watered by this river flowing from the temple. The fruit will be full and the leaves will bring about healing. 
This is a cold-blooded river I heard, Gary. Father, I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that my spirit is settled. Put a guard around my mouth. Let me speak only what you would have me say. Bring uh, spiritual impartation that brings about revelation that ultimately brings about a transformation in every area of our lives. We are open for your kingdom to manifest. We thank you for the hand of the Lord being upon our lives. We thank you for the privilege to stand in your kingdom, inside of your embassy and do business on this afternoon. Save somebody's soul, encourage somebody who may, may be discouraged. Break every chain and break every yoke that is attached to the minds and also the emotions of the people of God. Heal, give us strength and grace to go through. A lot of us is grieving behind missing loved ones during this time of the year. So much is going on in the spiritual realm. Who, my God, so give us eyes, spiritual eyes to navigate. Make us sensitive, Father God, to what you're saying and what you're doing. Help us to catch your river and your rhythm, Father God, in the kingdom. Take us where you would have us to go, not where we want to go. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on and say amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to finish this. I started on last two uh, two Sunday before last, and so you can go get point number. I mean, uh, last week's a um, week before last sermon on YouTube. And the title of the sermon I'm gonna give it to you is you "Go Deeper in the River." We got to go deeper in the river. We got to go deeper in the river. Before I get started, I want to say happy birthday, Scooter. Happy birthday. Let's give Scooter a hand. Also to Sister Johnson and Valerie and anybody else I missed, their birthdays was yesterday. We thank God. Let's give God a hand for them. Amen. Amen. I want you to get ready. I like the spirit that's in the house right now, Pastor Tony. I want you to get your book out. I want you to get your pen, your paper, your iPad or whatever it is, your tablet that you're going to write on. Because I want to give you something that's going to anchor your soul. You, we're living in some times where our soul got to be anchored. If you don't know what your soul is, if your mind is not anchored, you're going to get defeated. My God, if your mind is not anchored in the things of God and your faith is not solidified, my God, I promise you, you will live a defeated Christianity walk. Y'all need to stay with me because I'm heavy and I feel good, not heavy in a bad way. I want to teach the sheep because there's a lot of things that you and I and a lot of battles that you and I have fought in 2018. And God is still moving. There's some promises and things that God has spoken and said that he would, my God, do in 2018. So don't close up and skip over because we ain't made it to 2019. If God said it, he going to do it. He might do it, my God, at the 1159. Come on, he is still that God. And he's still, if he's, if God, here's the thing, though. If God said it, he will fulfill it. Yeah. Key word is, did God really tell you what you were hoping for? Right. Now, don't get discouraged if it don't manifest, and then you start doubting and seeing if God is even real, because he's real. He, I promise you, he, he came down through 42 generations. I promise you that he died, and I promise you that he got up. Yes, he did. Yeah. And he's sitting high, and he's looking low right now. And he will do that what he called for. Y'all know my saying, what God calls for, he will provide for. He ain't never let you down. It may feel like it. He ain't let us down. That's why he tell us this is a faith walk. That's why he said we got to walk by faith and not by sight. Sight will discourage you. Sight will make you quit. Sight will make you give up. If you listen to the noise and listen to the chatter and get around the wrong people, you'll get discouraged and quit. That's why you got to be careful and guard against people, places, and things. The enemy is very strategic. Just like God is strategic, the enemy is very strategic when he's trying to, my God, dethrone something, when he's trying to knock something off, when he's trying to take something down. Oh, my God, he works methodically. He ain't going to stop. He ain't going to quit until he accomplishes that what you allow him to accomplish. Did y'all catch what I just said? Yeah. Amen, Pastor. So we're going to go a little deeper this afternoon in a few minutes I have. I feel like teaching you, teaching you this afternoon. Dion, you ready? I see you got your pad out. You look real good, son. Yeah, it's okay to look good. Don't, don't, do not apologize about it. Because a whole lot of them wish they could. I can't get nobody to say nothing. Amen. There you go. There you go. Amen. Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with that, man of God. I know your story. I remember when you didn't have. But you work now. Yeah, yeah. Come on, Sharon. Pick your past up in the spirit. Don't make me feel like I'm out of order because I know I'm flowing in the go Holy Ghost. My God, Ezekiel is envisioning a time when the Lord will bring about absolute healing. See, there's physical healing and also there's spiritual healing. Every last one of us need both of those. There's some physical healing. There's some things that's coming your way in 2019. I'm not prophesying something negative. I'm telling you the truth. There's some things that the enemy is going to try to do to attack you in 2019 when it comes to your physical body. 
But you got to draw, draw strength from this sermon right here in 2018 when you cross over to 2019 when the enemy tried to attack your body and try to attack your mind. Come on, somebody. But this river that we're going to deal with here in a few minutes that we have, it, heal, it brings healing to your, to your physical body. It also brings healing to your spiritual soul. Are y'all with me so far? And so this, this river brought absolute healing to the nation of Israel. This was a time when the river of God's grace and blessing will flow from his throne and will refresh the promised land. You see, what has happened in the modern church in our time, my God, is that many have become too cautious about giving their all to Jesus. It don't take all that. Why are they worshiping like that? Why are they praising worship leader doing all that, trying to make us do something we don't want to do? See, we do all that type of stuff. That's at somebody else's church. That ain't at our church, though. We don't, we don't, we, we. I promise you, I can put you back up and we'll go right back in. So, okay, amen, amen, I like that, my God. But too many people, my God, are far too cautious. Sometimes, I understand that being dignified. I understand carrying yourself with integrity. But sometimes, my God, you got to lose all that when you're trying to get something from God, man. <laughs> when you're in a desperate situation, my God, you need God to move because the enemy running all up and down your back, all up and down your house, my God. This ain't a time to be play, play it safe. Oh, this is a time when you got to go a little deeper. Yeah. Oh, my God, my God. So we play it too cautious mm. about giving our all to Jesus. Mm. My God, I, 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 I truly believe that God wants some of us this afternoon to go deeper. Yeah. You have to go beyond what you're accustomed to. Boy, you look real good. External. But God is beckoning us to go deeper. And so I'm not going to mess with point one. You can go look on YouTube and hear about point one. But let's jump straight to point number two is where I want to go this afternoon. Let's look at this. Ezekiel had to go a little farther. The Bible speaks about Jesus, my God. He didn't want to, but he got up and he went a little farther for you and I. He came to finish that what he started. I found out that we tend to be, as a people all over the world, we tend to be good starters but terrible finishers. I don't know about you, there is some things that we have left unfinished in 2018. We showed trying to cross over to 2019, but God said, no, 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 you might want to, you got a couple weeks, why don't you go ahead and finish that which you started early in the year? Come on, somebody, why don't you go ahead and clean that garage and, and, and go up in that attic, come on, come on, and, and clean that stuff out that you want to throw away. My God, but Ezekiel, my God, was, was, was forced to, to venture out with God. God will put you and I like he's doing me right now and force you and I. He's forcing me to do some things. Force you and I, my God, to venture out a little farther. My God, you got to be willing to launch. Oh, my God, you got to be willing to launch a little farther. You got to be willing to cast your faith and cast your vision a little farther. Some of you cast your faith and your vision just farther enough so you can control it. But real vision ain't vision until you can't control it. Real, real vision ain't vision, my God, until, my God, you don't have the means, my God, to accomplish. It's going to take a... And so God, we're, 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 we're telling the church right now as a whole, corporately as well as individually, it's time to venture out. It's time to go a little farther. Yeah, you go to class. Yeah, you connect it. Yeah, you come to church. But it, you pass that. Yeah. See, for some of y'all, that, that don't defice you no more. That don't satisfy you no more because you have outgrown that. It's time now to venture out a little farther. And Ezekiel had to go a little farther. Don't you know that God will train you through situations and circumstances? Yeah. Oh, my God. God got a way of nudging you. God got a way of pushing you. Oh, my God. God got a way of making and things real, real, Tony, uncomfortable, my God, and will force you to come, will force you to lunch out. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. God, 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 God will put his hands on you. God will, will stir up circumstances and situations that you think is the devil, but God said, nope, this is me. I'm doing this. God is stirring you up for a work. Somebody write that down. God is stirring you up for a work. God is trying to push you through the things you and I experienced to, to venture out <laughs> or oh, a little farther. My God, as this man in Ezekiel's vision measured the river, he carried Ezekiel along with him. Be careful who you got carrying you. This was an angel that carried Ezekiel. Be careful who you're listening to. Don't you know people's voices can carry you? So the angel carried Ezekiel along with him. As a, result, as a result, the prophet was led into deepening waters. God ain't going to let you drown. I know it's scary to go deeper. I know we as a people, my God, we are fearful of the unknown. I am too. I'm with you. But God's will got to be done one way or the other. And I want him to use me. 
I don't want to miss my sign because I'm afraid to go deeper. And so he had to pick somebody else because I let fear rob me. The fear of the unknown robbed me. Not wanting to be flexible, flexible robbed me. Not wanting to submit at a greater level robbed me. And some of you may be cool with being robbed. You okay with your 9 to 5? Your 2013 car? Taking a vacation? Might be. After you get your income taxes. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, see, some of you are cool with that. So you can't go deep in God if you're cool with that. That's not life. That's existing. Mm, mm, mm. The prophet was taking, my, was taking deeper into deepening water. And God wants to do the same thing in your life and my life. There are depths to, to Ezekiel's adventure. Right down ankle deep. Let's deal with this ankle deep. So that means that uh, when you step in the water, only thing is in there is your ankles. It's just right there. You know, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you're trying to take the newborn baby and he may, may be one or two or she may be, and you just put their feet in the water and let them splash and they be splashing. This represents the step of faith that saves a soul, though. According to Acts 16, 31, they replied, the word of God, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Many stop right here, though, and never go any farther with God. There is much more to being saved than just getting saved, y'all. I've always told y'all, you and I got to uh, uh, desire to become like the second Adam. The second Adam is Jesus. Many people get saved, but they never aspire to become like the second Adam. You got to take your profession and your belief and being born again to another level. The only way that you and I are going to go deeper in the things of God and become like Christ in areas of our lives, you got to really truly do what we do. It's called flip them pages. You got to spend time, my God, in the presence of the Lord. Many people have given their life to Christ and they feel like I'm good. And it's millions of people all around the world, my God, that may be saved. I don't know. But he did say many are called, but few are chosen. I am a firm believer, my God, that when you, have an, when you have an encounter with God and you are saved, your appetites will begin to change. The Bible says that Christ justified us on Calvary. Then the Bible says the Holy Spirit now got to sanctify your life. For you don't know what sanctified means, look it up. God will begin to purify your habits. He will begin to change your, 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 your intentions, your motives, and so forth. He will begin to clean you up from the inside. What that means is that what used to be attractive to you is no longer attractive to you. That what used to work, my God, no longer work. Come on, your desires begin to change. Many has been stuck right here for a long time, 10 years, with their ankles in the water, and don't desire to go no farther. That's between you and God. But we're talking about going deeper. The, this is the, where the waiters stay. Those who get saved and refuse to grow. In the Lord are just dabblers. Dabblers, dabblers. Notice my verbiage is they refuse. Don't you know you have to choose not to grow? Don't you know that you and I have to tell God, I don't want to be sanctified. I don't want to change. I don't want to stop doing that. You make the choice. The Bible says, I said before you, life and death, blessings and curses. Then the scripture says, choose life. You and I have to choose not to get healed. You have to choose to stay sick. That's why the Bible says, those who are physically sick, let them call for the elders, that the elders may lay hands on them, and they shall recover, or they shall be healed. Oh, my God, is it safe to say, my God, and I believe it is, that some of us is choosing to stay in Egypt? Egypt is captivity. We are so bitter and so angry. As I was teaching my son, many people are angry at God. And when you're angry at God, you got to find somebody other than God to blame it on. Mm. 
Don't you know that when you and I allow bitterness and unforgiveness, my God, familiar words in the Christendom, my God, but when you and I, let's go high, you are angry at God because the way God has done things, God has disrupted many of your lives and you're angry. And so I got to find something physical to point my anger at. Which takes all the, because we know we better be careful calling ourselves being angry at God. So I got to find a physical situation, a physical being, my God, to deflect my real anger. Anger will keep you ankle deep. Many people spend all their time in the shallow end of the pool afraid to go deeper. They miss the blessings of the deeper life. These people are in total, absolute control of their lives. Are you to the point now where you are still telling God what you is going to do and what you're not going to do and when you're going to do it and how you're going to do it and I don't want to do it and that's a dangerous place to be in. Christians that talk like that on a consistent basis has not elevated, have not advanced, have not processed. I don't care if they've been in church 10 years. If you still think like that, my God, you got absolute control. You may be saved. I'm not questioning nobody's salvation this afternoon. But are you controlling your life? Are you trying to dictate everything that go on in your life? Which calls stress. Which calls physical sickness. Which causes high blood pressure. Because we are trying to stay in absolute control. Of our life. Now we trust God to save us, but we don't trust God to advance us. We trust God with eternal salvation cue, but we don't trust God to orchestrate and manage our life. Brittany, think about it. We trust you, you and I, I and you, daughter, trust God that when, because of what we have confessed and believed, Pastor Teresa, we go into heaven, my God, but we don't trust God to orchestrate, my God, in, in order the rest of our life. Many people are stuck and stopped right there. Ankle deep Christians. You got to make a decision. And I'm going to leave that alone and move to the next one. You know if you are ankle deep. Ankle deep means you know that you are controlling what you're going to do. How you going to allow the spirit of God to come. When you read your Bible. When you come to church. What you going to do. How you going to do it. God is sitting in heaven looking at that and saying I can't do nothing with that. He, that's Bible. He can't. God is not going to force himself to do anything in your life. You and I got to understand that you have to give God legal permission. See, that's kingdom right there, Tony. Legal permission. And say, God, do what you will in my life. How you want to do it, when you want to do it. I don't understand it, but I understand your grace. See, when you understand God's ways, when you understand God's grace and mercy, you understand that God got you. God, God got you, man. God ain't going to let you do nothing. All of it is going to kill you, man of God. It may feel like it. Some of the things I'm dealing with right now feel like it's going to kill me, but I know God's grace is keeping me. I couldn't do what I'm doing without God's grace. Man, I'm about to lose my mind right now. And it's only by God's grace that I'm able to stand up here and deliver any kind of word to you. It's not by your might nor by your power, but it's by his spirit, saith the Lord. Let's go to number two. Let's look at knee deep. These are the ones that decided that I'm going to go a little farther, though. But let's talk about it. The knees speak of prayer. We pray. I just commissioned us to come pray from 6 to 7, especially starting January the 2nd through the 22nd. This represents a life that is learning dependency upon the Lord. This is good. This is the person who prays and, 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 and is trying to live their life in faith before the Lord. Those who are, my God, those who are at this level know something about the power of this river that I'm talking about. They can feel its power as it rushes past them, but they aren't really affected by it. They are still standing on their own two feet. They are in control, but they're not in absolute control. Y'all stay with me, baby. Oh, my God. And so you come in and we experience the, 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 the presence of the Lord. And, my God, we see people like Stephanie up here giving God the glory. My God. We see Mama down over here grooving. My God. We see Teresa, you know what I'm saying, doing her thing. Then we see Tanya raging war. Come on. I can't get nobody say it. We see Barry up trying to be G cool and cool. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. But then you got other people, my God, that don't understand. 
Why are they doing all that? Do it really take all that? Then you got others, my God, saying, I want that, but I'm afraid of what she's going to say if I do that. I want that, but I'm afraid of what's going to happen, my God, if my friend that I bought see me really get loose like that. I know I got hell going on in my life right now, and I really need to be getting up there, getting it in, my God, whether it's up there or in my seat, but I'm worried about what people think. I'm not in absolute control, but I'm in control. I follow your passion until you correct me. I say yes, God, with conditions. Husband and wife love each other with conditions. Hold me accountable, my God, but don't interrupt my personal life. I don't want to let him go. I'm going to keep doing that. We talking about going deeper. These things that the Spirit of God is laying out so strategically, like a mm, like a surgeon, yes. it's things that you and I have to die, kill, yes. before you cross it and take it over. That's it. That's it. These are things that you and I got to come face to face with in our lives, starting from the pulpit to the church. Mm, mm, mm. Knee deep. Now I'm up here. I'm praying. I didn't taste it. I get a little, ooh, I feel good today. Ooh, that was good. Ooh, that felt good. I was impacted by his presence today. Well, I read a little bit today. I feel good. I came to church, my God. I know I ain't going to come next week, and, you know, but I came today. I feel good. You know, instead of me giving God what I belong to him, I gave him what I felt like I wanted to give him, but I feel good. You know, I didn't look at it this week, but I looked at it last week. I didn't go over her house or his house, but I did. I'm still in control. You my pastor when I want you to be. Your voice matter when I want it to matter. I love going home for Christ when I want them to give me an offering to pay my bills. Yeah, it's real. You got to be in the spirit to catch what the spirit of God is doing. And he's surgically laying it out there. Thank you, Pastor Teresa. The mindset to the body, everywhere. Everything is conditional. Some is absolute control and some is in control. And they don't want to let go of control. They submit when they want to submit. Underline, I call it Absalom spirit. We got Absalom spirit even when we're dealing with God. Trying to steal God's kingdom from me. Come on, Satan. I'm equal with you. Absalom. But I'm praying. I'm up to my knees. I experienced the presence, but I ain't submitted to the presence. I know what I should be doing. We talking about knee deep Christians now, Sarah, but I still ain't doing it. I know I told God yes. I know I made some vows, uh, but I really wasn't ready. Oh, they worship them with this mouth, but their hearts really ain't for the body. I'm sorry, but it's Bible. If I didn't care about you, I preach you happy, let you jump and shout, let the praise and worship just run around here, and we can just praise, 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 but is that going to affect your life? Is that preparing you to do war outside these four walls that's in this church? This type of stuff gets you ready for the real war. Come on, somebody. But this Christian here is still on his two feet. They ain't in absolute control, Shante, but they in control. I'm with you with conditions. I commit to you with conditions. Yeah. We just landed. Let's go to number three. Lowing deep or waist deep. Look at that. The loins are symbolic for strength. You like this one. This speaks of spiritual power in our lives. When one has waded out waist deep into the river, more of the river, y'all, and less of the man is seen. According to John 3, 30, Pastor Tedrick, it says he must become greater and I must become less. He must increase and I must decrease. Is God's ways and will and spirit increasing in your life? When you when you waste deep now, the, the, the I can only see this part up. Everything else is covered. 
I no longer have absolute control. I no longer have control. Now I'm starting to get to where my hands is off of everything. Because God is trying to get me to a place in this river that gives life, refreshing, reviving, and healing. It's trying to get me to the place where I'm in, where I'm in total submission to the river. Where I, where I don't allow myself to control how the river affect me. Oh, this river, my God, comes from the from 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 from, from the throne, the temple of the living God. And then you go over to Romans 20, I mean Revelation 22, 1, write that down. Then there's a river, baby code, that comes from my God, the throne of heaven. So you got different type of rivers. This one comes from the temple. And then you got the river, my God, that flows, my God, it comes from the throne of heaven. That's Revelation 22, 1. But I'm not talking about that one right there. I'm talking about this one right here that comes from the temple. The temple. You know what the temple is? The church house. When you get in the river, <laughs> when you get properly connected, oh, my God. Bishop told us last Sunday, my God, that God didn't breathe on the valley of the dry bones until they got connected. Yeah. Then that's when he breathed. See, many of you are not experiencing things because you ain't connected. Yeah. And so, therefore, things that, oh, my God, God want to do it in your life. God want to do it in your life. Please hear your pastor. It's things that God has been trying to do in your life, unlock, heal, whatever you want to put on it in your life. But because you let stuff, my God, disconnect you and you follow God from her. You follow me from her. You follow different leaders from her. My God, you're not connected. And so therefore you are disqualifying yourself from blessings. Mm -hmm. Things that you should have been crossed over, things that should be already operating in your life. They are not because you are not in agreement with the temple. Those are the ones that still are in control. Those are the ones that dictate how and what the will of God will look like in their lives. Them are the ones that say, Pastor, I'm with you, but in their heart, they ain't. Those are the ones that will find somebody that's wounded, my God, and start talking about people and talking about stuff inside the church. Those are the people, my God, my God, that say and look like they're connected, but they really ain't connected, church. I'm telling y'all. This not just in this church. I'm talking about everywhere. Please take your mind to a higher level. I'm not just talking about going home for Christ church. This is the body of Christ. This is an apostolic word that fits the body of Christ, not going home for Christ. When you are properly submitted and committed to God and in right standing with the temple, the church, the synagogue, my God, then you will see God breathe. That's where you'll see Psalms 133, my God, where the people is all together on one accord and the commanded blessing fail. Oh, it can't be a whole lot of agendas. Oh, my God, it can't be a whole lot of this is my way and this is what I'm going to do without it. See, all that right there will disqualify you, my God, from the commanded blessings. Is it safe to say? Is it safe to say that we're good at looking connected? Talking like we connected. It is, ain't it? But ain't connected. Not connected here, horizontal, and really not even connected vertical. Because when you connected vertical and your spirit is alive and you spending time with God, there's just certain things God would not, your spirit, thank you, Holy Ghost, would not allow you to do. When the spirit of God is operating in your life at full force, it will break your control. It would disrupt and interrupt your life. I promise you this past week I've been balled up in the spiritual realm like a baby. God showed me I'm in a fetus. Oh, y'all daughter said that's a good place. That's a painful place for me. That's painful. In the spiritual realm I'm balled up like a baby in a mother's womb. God ain't never gave me that vision in almost 20 plus years. That's the type of stuff that people in ministry will do to you. That's also the type of stuff you do to yourself when you move things by the flesh and not by the spirit. Some of us just balled up in the, in the fetal position. It ain't the devil's fault. It's your fault and my fault. You made the choice. You made the decision. <laughs> My God. I told you the spirit was set. But when we weighed out this for y'all, we could feel the powers I said that others can be affected by. It. Mm. 
Who's been affected? The man of God said if one person got one person to come to this church, this 150, 60, 70, so I don't know, I have 200 people in there. If just one of y'all got one person, there won't be no room there. How is the temple affecting your reach life? How is the temple, your reading, your praying, your coming together as Christians affecting your missional life? When Paul discipled Timothy, he affected his personal life, he affected his spiritual life, and once he got him healthy personally and spiritually, he released him and set him as the pastor of the church. True discipleship affects personal, spiritual, and missional. We ain't connect and sin. Disciple and sin. You see what I'm trying to say? So ask yourself, the river of God that's supposed to be flowing in you and I, is it affecting anybody other than you? Is the river, the Bible says, out of us shall flow rivers of living water. Is living water really flowing? These are just questions that you and I got to ask because until you deal with this, you can't go deeper. You can't go deeper. You'll dabble. Mm, mm, mm. My God, as deep as this level of spiritual growth is, it's still not deep as we can go, y'all. Mm, my God. A few, a few, the few who are at this level of spiritual maturity, they are often picked up by the river. When you get to where you're waist deep, when you get to where you're really experienced and really hungry and thirsting after God, where you really let go of absolute control and you really have let go of control, my God, and it's nevertheless not my will but thy will be done. When you have made up your mind that you're going on to see what the end of a saved life going to be like. When you decided, my God, it's me against the world. Come on, somebody. When you have made a firm commitment, my God, that you're going on, my God. Then the prophet, my God, said the river took him. Now I'm not ankle. Now I'm not knee. Now I'm not waste. Now I got no control. Now God can do what he want to do, when he do it, how he do it, where he do it, uh, as often as he want to do it. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Talking about going deeper. Oh, my God. You got to get to the point in your Christian walk, my God, where the river now controls you. Yeah. Guess what the river is? The Holy Spirit. Yeah. The Holy Spirit. Now controls you. And guess what? The Holy Spirit don't need your permission to do what God has commissioned it to do. It don't need your permission to do what God commissioned you to do. The Holy Spirit don't need your permission to do what God has commissioned the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is a person. God don't need your permission to do what he told and commissioned the Holy Spirit to do in your life. Now, when you get to this point, you ain't got no will. It's his will. <laughs> And so now God can take you deeper into that what he has for you. Now God's get you and I ready for purpose and potential. Now God start divinely, Mother Margaret, connecting you with people that has influence and, and can write the check. Come on, somebody. People that's going to show, my God, doors begin to open. My God, opportunities that was closed, now it's open now, my God. Who am I got to things that he want to do, my God? Who am I got in your life? Because now you don't have no control. See, if God would have gave it to you before then, you would have messed it up, and I would have messed it up. And so now you and I ain't got no control. Now he can start executing his will in your life. You want to get to this point, my God, where you at, you don't have no control. But see, for us as human beings, I'm going to keep it on the dollar. That's very fearful. I ain't got no control. You mean tell me God going, mm, I may have to sell everything to end up over there on the mission field in Africa? The Spirit of God may speak to me and say, that ain't, he ain't, she ain't, it, it, it. You mean tell me God told me to give my first fruit check to the church? The devil is alive. Listen to y'all. I'm just saying. I'm trying to get you to understand because when you get to this point, and I'm watching, when you get to this point, my God, it is truly, truly, nevertheless, not my will, but that. At this point, you want to please God. At this point, you want to walk in a, great, a greater level of obedience, my God. You don't have to wrestle about reading your Bible. You don't have to wrestle about praying. It's easy to give your money. It's easy to be a blessing. It's easy to serve sheep done. It's easy to do what God has told you to do because you ain't got no control now. You're not dictating. You're not dictating. I like what you just said, Pastor. You're dead. You're dead. 
Your ambitions and goals and aspirations is dying. And God is giving you his goals, his ambition, his, his aspirations. Your perception change. You find yourself laid out talking about God, forgive me. You find yourself over there in Joel, my God, repenting before the Lord, asking for the Spirit of God to come in and revive and refresh you. Oh, my God, you realize when you missed it at, and you'll be transparent enough to go back and fix where you messed it up at. Come on, somebody, like your pastor's doing. You're no longer, my God, dominated by the perception and opinions of people. You're dominated by the spirit of the living God. And my God, you don't mind being misunderstood. You don't mind being talked about, my God. You don't mind people that was once with you leaving you, my God. You get past all that right there, baby. It's God's will or it's nothing, baby, in the house. I don't care who don't like it, who don't go, who don't stay. I'm free, baby. Oh, I know it's tight, but it's right, but I'm free all the way around. Yep, you get to a different level, baby, when the Spirit of God is now carrying you. I was sitting in first service and the God spoke. I was sitting me in queue in first service and God spoke to me. And God was telling Pastor Dean and Pastor Madeline in my office, my God, in our little pre-service, my God, meeting that we had. My God, there's just certain things you got to let go. Life is too short. I think about Mother Pepman, Mama God, Mark Pepman's father who had two stints put in his heart. He, he came from seconds, they said, from dying. On this past Friday, Pastor Jeff had to rush out the meeting and get to him. Life is too short, man. Ain't nobody got time for all that stuff, man. You were supposed to let it go, my God, when you was ankle deep. And then God's grace and mercy, my God, covered you till you got knee deep and you still ain't let it go. You still ain't stopped doing it. You still ain't submitted. Come on, somebody. And now God said, okay, okay, okay. So now I got to turn it up. You talking about turn up? You don't want God to turn it up. Mm -hmm. When you and I get to the point, my God, thank you, boy, the time is good. When you and I get to the point as professing believers where we are trying to control everything, we're not open to hear nothing. We are unteachable in every area of our life. Notice I said every area because you become unteachable even in your marriage. Well, her voice or his voice don't matter, Oliver, Period. That's a bad place to be in. When you and I become unteachable, my God, in the ministry, that's a bad place to be in. Don't ever let nobody dumb you down as a pastor. Especially when you've earned the right to walk at a level in their life. Did you catch that, Pastor Terry? All right. When you've earned the right, because leadership, you got to be earned and be heard. Leader is the position. But then as a leader, you got to become relational. There's always a, a relational component to leadership. I was telling them Monday, my God, you, you, we got to become relational. Too many of us standoffish. We hang around our foe and no more. We clickish in the church. Had Pastor Teresa, but then you run right to your other 12, sister. You don't even care about what's going on with this sister. Leadership is relational. All, all a pastor is is the king servant. That's it. That you mean I got greater responsibility to serve you and correct you. Good message to clean up as we cross over. We talking about going deeper. I'm reminded, my God, of Morgan Morgan, as he said, there's people that's waiting to be connected to this house, get their freshness from this temple that God cannot bring. Until we allow him to do what he's trying to do. Right. And has already started implementing to do. There's people that is waiting. I ain't forgot the prophecy, woman of God. Influential. Mega resources. Everything that we need is already ready. We just got to just walk in. Before you can receive the full mantle, 
You got to get to the point where you don't have no control. Where the temple is affecting every area of your life. There's many that has disconnected from this temple. And they're no longer in God. When you came, you was desperate. When you came, you went to everything. You showed up at everything. As soon as God allowed a little squeeze to come off and a little breakthrough to come through, now all of a sudden that what it took. Now you all tell yourself it don't take that no more. And before you know it, you'll be telling yourself, how did I get back here? Yeah. Let me move to three and I'm done. There's a powerful picture of increasing progress, y'all, and depth in our spiritual life. This illustrates progression from the ankles to the knees to the waist. Are you progressing in your spiritual life? Are you progressing in your spiritual life? We start off when we give our life to Christ ankle deep. And then through sanctification, we move to knee deep. And then as we continue to develop, we move to waist deep. Then as we continue to grow, my God, and submit, my God, now it's no longer our will, but it's God's will. So we went from absolute control to control to no control <laughs> of God's perfect will being done in our life. Mm. So we, this, it illustrates progression from ankles to knees to waist to depths to where we no longer touch the ground and we must swim. Y'all going to like this, huh? God dropped it. Sometimes we must swim to where God wants us to not walk. It's no longer walking. Now we're swimming. Oh, my God. I'm no, I, I, I ain't got nothing to balance me. I ain't, got nothing to, I ain't got no foundation up under me. I ain't got nothing, my God, to step onto, my God. Peter stepped off of the boat, my God, onto nothing. But now I ain't got nothing up under me. I ain't got nothing to catch me. Mm. Now God is really stretching my faith. Do I really believe that he's able, my God? Do I, am I fully persuaded, like Paul said, that nothing should separate me? I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't got nothing to hold me. Either I'm going to sink or swim. Woo, you're going to get to a point when you walk with God, you're either going to shrink. Sink or swim. Either your faith going to anchor you or your faith, my God, going to allow you to drown. You determine that. Uh. Ask yourself, are you still walking? And God is saying you need to be swimming. You got too much in you and you're still trying to control everything. Oh, my God. You know what gets us? Thank you, Holy Ghost, boy. God, when we got a vivid picture, I understand God gives us revelation. God gives us vision. But when you try to, my God, fulfill that vision, you, you start trying to do it in your own strength. I told my God, I am so glad that God don't show me like he have showed many of y'all and different people, the church being full and all of those type of stuff. And, you know, because you know, I, I, I said, my God, if God began to show me those type of dreams and visions, then I would start trying to fulfill that. I start trying to make that stuff happen. I start trying to get the building in this condition. I start doing lights. I start, I start doing all this old type of stuff, trying to get ready for all the people that God showed me. So then I start moving from spirit to flesh. So I thank God that he don't show me that type of stuff. Because I know me and God know me better than me. And so I just like it that he give it to me one step at a time. Because I know, because I got faith that what is supposed to come to me will come to me. I am glad who, that he don't show me that type of stuff. Now, for some of y'all, there's prophets and all that. Some of y'all, oh, my God, this big vision of me. God may have showed you all this stuff for your life. Here's the danger why I said what I said. When you begin to see that type of stuff, you try to execute it. When God show it to you, submit it back to him. When God give you your Isaac, give it back to him. When God give you your dream, I'll show you your dream, give it back to him. And then say, God, you fulfill it. Because what God has predetermined and predestined for this ministry, I couldn't feel it no way. I couldn't fulfill what God has in store for this ministry. That's why I told y'all, my God, to pray for the destiny and existence of this church. Sometimes the blessings, my God, can kill you instead of bless you. <laughs> y'all thought I was talking about we were in glory church. So your flesh got to come under spirit. 
The blessings of the Lord will kill you if you ain't ready for them. Yeah. They will destroy you. If you ain't got some type of self-esteem and self-confidence, my God, and, and something don't manifest, you will look at yourself as a failure and you will run somewhere and hide. Mm. <sighs> mm, mm, mm. It's a cold bloody calling up in here, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. As I close, number three, let's look at the victory, though. See, you got your pants just high enough above your ankles so I can see them. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. Is that a barber sock scooter? What is that you? I'm not mad at you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Church, you got to go deeper. Welcome to our future if we don't go deeper. Welcome to what you got if you don't make up your mind that you got to go deeper. Welcome to your personal life that you don't like and you're unhappy about if you don't go deeper. Welcome to your terrible relationships, my God, that you don't like if you don't go deeper. Welcome to your bad credit when you can't get number 21% interest on that car that you're shouting about. It's going to take you a thousand years to pay it off. Welcome to your future if you don't go deeper. When you go deeper, there's victory. According to Psalms 46, 4, write this down. It says, there's a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the most holy one dwells. Psalms 46, 4. There is a river whose streams make glad. Don't you know when you are properly connected to the temple and you're in this river, my God, it will give you, my God, gladness even in the midst of storms? <laughs> Tiffany, it'll give you gladness even in the midst of storms. There's a river, listen to the verbs. There's a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the most high dwells. At this point, Ezekiel has reached a place where the river is in complete control. It takes him where it wants to. He has no power over his destination. Ooh, my God. He has no power over his destination. He is at the mercy of the river, y'all. This represents the highest spiritual level, my God, that any believer can reach in life. There are three reasons why I have said this, that this is the deepest you can ever go. Number one, when you are at this deep, you have gone beyond your own ability. Ezekiel was at the total mercy of the river. You have gone beyond your own ability. Ezekiel, again, y'all, was at total mercy of the river. Far too many of us like the safety of the shore. Total, absolute control of the river. The river took Ezekiel anywhere it wanted to take him. Are you prepared for God to take you anywhere he wants to take you? Are you ready for God to disrupt your plans? All you got to do, little Jay, is submit. He got everything worked out. There's lessons you have to learn along the way. You've always been a superstar. God got you. God got you. Stay encouraged. It's all part of the plan. It's going to make you work harder. And when you step on the court, you're going to dominate because now you had to work to get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At this point, no longer in control. God got to allow you and I to get in situations where you and I is no longer in control. And when you get to this point, dirty dads, he really don't care no way. He's in control. He going to do what he want to do. How he want to do it. When he want to do it. Even with our sons. Even with our sons, Tony. Yeah. Number two. When you are this deep, keep it talking about, keep it in mind, you ain't got no control is what I'm saying. It's over. You didn't give it up. It's all God. I ain't nothing at all. When you are this deep, you have ceased to support yourself. 
You move to Zechariah 4 and 6, it's not by my might nor by my power, but it's by his spirit, saith the Lord. We still got too, we still got too much control. We still try to dictate everything that we will allow God to do in our lives. And God is trying to break us so that he can make us. He really is. He's trying to break us so that he can make us. Ezekiel was no longer waiting, y'all. He was just resting. He wasn't in charge. He gave himself over to the power of the river. This is where God wants to bring you and I, where we're resting in God, where we have full trust to where it don't matter because we trust that God got us. Did you catch that, daughter? God got you. God got you. God got you. Even the ceiling, God got you. We got to get out of God's way. I am a firm believer. I only got one more thing, and I'm done. There are a lot of stuff that we are carrying and dealing with right now. We caused it because we try to control everything. Some of the reconstruction of the model, some of the things that you're seeing is taking place, is because I allow my flesh to get in the way. And I got ahead of God on some things. What pastor keeps it on a dollar like that? One is not afraid to go back and make right. What's wrong? <laughs> I know some of you don't like it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. It's all good, it's all good. I still love you. Mm -hmm. And the third thing, when you're at this deep, you have given yourself up to the will of the river. Ezekiel was going where the river took him. I am going where the river takes me. I have given up the reins. There is truly time to adjust and adapt. To the river. The river at times can be very uncomfortable because the river takes you where you really in the flesh don't want to go. But it is the best thing for you and I because God knows what's best. Mm. We have to begin to lose sight of ourselves. He wants us to be totally submitted and surrendered to him and his will. As I close, there is nothing more than for God's people to get to a place where they are deep in him as they can get. Notice this statement in verse number three. It says, Ezekiel said, lead me through the waters that was ankle deep. <laughs> that was Ankle deep. Some of you are holding back on your total commitment to the Lord this afternoon because you are afraid that if you fully sell out to him, my, my, my. you will drown. But I want to tell you that God will not let you drown, Yolanda. Some of you have not even trust God financially. And I know we don't pump prime nor beg. But a lot of things is attached to your finances because your finances reveal your true heart. Finances reveal your motives. Some of us just got to let go and let God. We say it, but we have to. 2019 has to is going to require a greater level of trust on my part as well as your part. If you are trying to serve and follow God and this work inside this temple from the flesh, you will be clipped too, like many more, and it's okay. It requires that you and I let go so that the river can take you where it want to take you. Some of us have to make a decision that I'm tired of being ankle deep. I quote a lot of scripture. I can even pray real good, but I'm really ankle deep. I get up here and I worship and I stand beside Pastor and I stand beside Tanya, my God, and I look like I'm knee deep, but I really ain't. Because when I leave the church, all that excitement and worship, I don't do at home. I ain't got no gospel music in my car. I got all rap. 
I have, I have, I have, I have, I have, I have tasted, thank you, Holy Ghost, the goodness of the Lord. I have seen God move. I have experienced at one point a time in my life where I had gave up all control and the spirit was taking me and doing what I allowed it to do at one time but somewhere along the line I have regained absolute control of my life that may be you this afternoon oh. God has told me to shift and let it go and I have it. That might be you this afternoon. I don't know what that it is. It may be fur. Please understand that when you come to the altar, it's not always mean you ain't sin. But if you know God has said something to you, then why don't you just let the Holy Spirit move you now without me having to go through all this preliminary. You know where you at. You know where your heart is at. Some of you need to come lay your mind on the altar. You're so defeated mentally, it's unbelievable. Some of you are wrestling with God's will for your future. Might well come submit it. Let the river of the Holy Spirit take you where it want to take you. For those that are struggling with control, because I know that's the church. That's even me right there, Tony. I'm definitely finna get out there. You know you got control. You want to do everything the way you want to do it, how you want to do it, when you want to do it. That ought to be you at the altar. God has told you to stop it and let it go, and you still justify why you ain't done it. You should be at the altar. God said you know better than that. That's the spirit of God, not beating you up, trying to provoke you so you can get your life right. You know and I know where you have compromised that in your life. God is waiting on you. Mm. If you don't know Christ and you have walked away from Christ, you ought to be up here too. If you have lost your passion, if you have lost your focus, my God, if you're not intentional about reading and praying no more, you should be at the altar as well. Truth be told, the whole church <laughs> should be somewhere on their face talking to Jesus because we are all guilty.